Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. So, a little while ago, I tried to source some more clone 8-bit Arduino Nano microcontrollers, the type we use heavily here on the channel and form the backbone of our Tiny Basic Computers project. Naturally, during the pandemic and the subsequent chip shortage, the demand for remaining Atmega 328p microcontroller chips, the chipset that mostly powers the Arduino boards, was quite high, making sourcing difficult. Even the clone boards have gone from being a few pounds to being anything up to seven to 11 pound each, a huge increase. So naturally, people like myself have been looking to China for replacements and ordering bulk quantities in directly. And that's what I did. I ordered and recently I got another pack of what was said to be identical Arduino Nano clone boards. And if you look at the two of them, they do look completely identical. Apart from the fact they're not. You see, this is the Arduino Nano with the Atmega 328P. And this is the Arduino Nano with the Atmega 328PB. And believe it or not, despite being advertised as drop-in replacements, this board doesn't actually work straight out the box. Now, personally, I don't think the seller or distributor in China mislabeled these boards deliberately. They look identical. Even I didn't spot it. So it'd be very easy to do. But before we continue, let's take a moment to say a huge hello and welcome to returning sponsor PCBWay.com, your one-stop solution. Alongside their high quality and fast turnaround turnkey PCB manufacturing, PCBWay also offers services in 3D printing, injection molding, CNC machine tooling, and sheet metal fabrication. In addition to regular offers on production services and purchasable products. And not forgetting the amazing PCB Wayer Maker community with hundreds of products and projects being shared daily. I'm really excited to be working with PCB Way once more, so don't miss out. Start your maker journey today. Sign up for your free account at PCBWay.com. Details and links are in the description. I'm just going to plug this PB version into my Raspberry Pi 400 via USB. So this will apply power. And you can see already here that we have the power LED and we have the TX serial LED lit up and permanently on, which is a little bit strange. Normally these boards, when new, power light and the load light will flash on and off with the blink sketch that's normally pre-uploaded as a test sketch into these. So these are already doing something a little bit strange. If I take us over to the Pi 400 desktop, I've got the blink sketch here and it would make sense just to try and upload straight to what is meant to be a fully compatible clone Arduino Nano. So boards, Arduino Nano, processor, Omega328P, port, USB port, get some board info. There we go. First of all, just check the serial monitor and um, this is what the boards seem to do by default. Output some kind of sensor and output. I don't know what it's sensing, but it is actually outputting via serial. So we know the board is actually working. I mean, clear input and there it goes again. So let's try uploading this new sketch. So I click to upload. The sketch will compile. This, by the way, is the blink sketch. Which is one of the example sketches. There we are, we're uploading. So we compiled happily, we're uploading. And it fails because believe it or not, it's not compatible. Despite the fact of being sold as an Arduino Nano, you can't actually upload anything as an Arduino Nano. This causes a huge problem. The solution to this is you need to install a new core into your Arduino IDE capable of handling the PB variant of the Atmega 328. To do that, we can go to File, Preferences. And we need to add a .json file. And we're going to add something called mini core. Here is the actual address. I will put the link to where to get this from, the GitHub, 
in the description to this video. But basically you copy and you paste this straight in. You say, okay. We then go to tool boards and board manager. And in the search field, we type mini core. And this should come up. Now I've already got this installed, but you need to install the latest version. You click install, it will install. I've already got this installed. And you can see here it has it supports the Atmega 328P, PA, A, and PB, among with a few other cores which might be useful for other projects later on. So I've got this installed. Installation for you will probably take a few moments, it is slow. So what we can now do is we can go board and we'll now have a new menu here called mini core. We're going to select Atmega 328. Now, my variant is the 328PB, and I know that by, but I can't really show it on the camera. There is some text printed on the chip. You probably need a magnifying glass to actually look at it, and it will tell you what variant of the chip is. So mine is the 328PB. So I shall click PB. Make sure you're on the correct port. Bootloader. We can say yes on UART1, which is PB only. And you also need to accept the external clock speed, which is 16 megahertz by standard. So will this work? Well, let's click upload and find out. The sketch compiles, but no, it doesn't upload it still fails with a out of sync command. Now this for me trying to figure all this out was extremely frustrating until I figured out that the problem might actually be the bootloader on this Nano. So we need to actually update the bootloader. So how do we do that? Well, we need something called a USP ISP programmer. And it just so happens I have one here. Very similar in size to the Nano, and it has USB plug on one side, we're going straight into a computer, and a ribbon pin connector on the other. You then have a small ribbon lead, and an adapter for the other end. So we'll disconnect the Nano from USB, and we need to plug this into the top pins of the Nano. So your Nano does need to have the top pins actually present and soldered in. So the way this goes round is ground and voltage are on this side so it goes this way around with the key or the punch if you like facing outwards. We can then plug in our ribbon lead and we can plug this ribbon lead into the other side. This I will now plug into a spare USB socket in the back of the Pi 400. And as you can see, both the programmer and the Nano have lit up correctly. So this is now in programming mode. Now in theory, what we should be able to do is click Tools, select the programmer and select USB ASP and then click to burn a bootloader. But there is a problem trying to do this on Raspberry and Linux on the Raspberry Pi. It says, warning, cannot open USB, permission denied. And it is actually a permissions issue with the Raspbian operating system, which is a Linux-based OS. So this is extremely frustrating, as I'm sure you can imagine. So as frustrating and annoying as that is, the quickest thing I found to do was simply jump over here to a Mac. Now, this Mac doesn't have the CH340 drivers, I think it is, that are needed to run cl most clone uh, nano boards. But it won't need that because we're just using it with the USB ISP programmer. So we'll just do as we did before. So the tools. I already preloaded the core so we've got the mini core is already set up and the programmer as I showed you over on Linux 
is the same and we're going to click to burn bootloader and there we go no problem done burning bootloader simple as that so let's hop over back to Linux on the Raspberry Pi so let's just disconnect from the program because we won't be needing that anymore now let's try plugging this Nano back through USB straight into the Raspberry Pi. The reason I'm using Linux on the Raspberry Pi to do most of the program is you don't need to run drivers to use these third party boards. So I don't need to install things on the Mac I don't necessarily want to install. So that's one advantage of using Linux and Raspberry Pis when this works. So let's put the programmer here back to AVR ISP Mark II. We can leave the rest of the settings where they are. And let's just check we are actually on the correct port. We are. And let's see if we can get Blink to work. So let's try and upload Blink. And there we are, as fast as that. So has that worked? Let's take a quick look. And yes, we can now see the Blink is now working. And this Nano is now perfectly usable and it will upload virtually every sketch that I've tested with it so far, including our own tiny basic kernel has worked fine. In fact, we can actually try that. So let's just find the kernel or a version of the kernel to have a play with. And don't need to change any settings, so we should be able to upload that straight. And that's done. And we can check if that's done by looking in the serial monitor. And there we are, see that's working absolutely fine. And we can add a command, so we can say memory. There is the memory, see it's got one user byte. So we need to reflash the EEPROM on board so we can check if that works by going E format. And that will format it. And if we try and then again, yep, there we are, no problem at all. So that's working. Great. So what have we learnt? Well, not all Arduino Nanos are made equal and some that can look absolutely identical to each other are actually far from it. Even if they're listed as being completely dropping compatible or being an identical product to something that went before when actually they're not. Luckily with these two, as you've seen, there is a solution and I generally believe had I got the permission sorted out under Raspberry Linux, we probably could have fixed whatever the issue was with uh, the permission writing with the programmer. But I just didn't have time, so I just hopped onto a Mac to do it. By the way, if you're on a PC, that would also work, but you will need the drivers for PC, and you'll also need the drivers for the programmer. So do check the documentation with your ISP programmer if you're going to do this. So we've got these two, but I've actually seen on the market, there's been many other boards claiming to be drop-in nano replacements. So for example, how about this one? Looks very similar, not quite the same, but looks very similar. But again, this one isn't actually as drop-in as it claims to be. Or how about this one? Again, looking very different, completely different chipset, not compatible other than the pins. And again, you know, not as drop-in compatible as claimed. Or finally, how about this one? This one doesn't even use the Atmega CPU and it's actually 32-bit as opposed to 8-bit, which the rest of the chips are. So as you can see, there's already quite a lot of diversity within the uh, compatible range of Nano or Arduino Nano type boards. So I think we all need to carry on and have a further investigation and I'll go through some of these other boards and show you how to get these setting up and what they can and can't do over the originals. I was just very conscious that with those you may be building our Tiny Basic Computers project and ordering Nanos if you can get a hold of them from China, just be warned they might come with a completely different chip to the one that the source code is actually designed for. This being the case, I will be updating the hex file shortly to make a version compatible with this PB variant. So if you haven't got it working so far, don't worry, I'm on the case. So the Atmega 328 PB chipset now appearing on some Arduino Nano clones. And yeah, this is a new one on me too, but something to look out for. All I can say is I'm very aware at the moment of what's being sold and fitted to Nano stock. 
I hope to have some embedded hex ROMs shortly addressing this issue for those backing the Tiny Basic project on Patreon. If you want to join them and help support the channel, you can by visiting patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. Tiny Basic is available as part of the general support and downloads tier from $3 or £2 per month. If you haven't done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing. And I hope to see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, thank you so much for your company and bye for now. Bye.